This is what the program is about. Again, remember, you're trying to address the mission needs of that agency, but there are agencies that are more open to any ideas, and there are agencies like the DOD that they have a problem that you're supposed to solve. So those are the kind of things you want to try to figure out with these one-on-ones. Um, so as I said, largest source of early stage, 2.5 billion a year, about 5,000 new awards go out every year. As we heard, the state does reasonably well, but uh, as you know, we all would like to do better and get more money, so that's how the program kind of is assessed. So this is money that these agencies already have in R&D, and basically they're told, set aside a certain amount for companies under 500 people that are U.S. owned and operated. <coughs> Uh, and then there's a sister program, STTR, and under that program, you have to team with a research institution. That said, the, uh, I don't know about the majority, but depending on the agency, HHS, the majority of the SBIRs also team with universities and stuff. So a lot of our, our work does have partnerships with university partners, but under STTR, it is required. So the greatest things about SBI are uh, non-diluted capital. So this is money, basically grants, but some give contracts, but it's money that you get that you do not have to pay back. Um, it's an investment in the IP. The firm owns the rights to the IP for a period of time that can be extended. Um, and it allows for follow-on awards in these phase threes, and you'll hear about um, back from the federal government without a competition. So there aren't many programs in the federal government. Typically when you get money at the university level or other places and it's federal dollars, the goal is to then share that technology, that expertise, that knowledge with others. With SBR, that's not the case. The firm keeps it and it's not diluted capital. So uh, a little bit better than trying to uh, leverage your firm. So we're typically kind of in that early pre-VC, pre-angel. We also fund things that are typically not funded by those areas and in areas that aren't funded by venture capital, which, you know, as many know, is kind of five zip codes get 80% of the venture capital. So our goal is to really help the rest of the country to help earlier stage, a lot of material type work that is 10 years out and get that moving and so that you're ready to have your IP mature enough so that you can get additional investments. So these are the agencies that participate in the program. If it's green, that shows that they have both an SBIR and an STTR program. Kind of give you a snapshot of the dollars. And I try to tell folks, don't get hung up on the dollars or what the agency's name is. When I was at Navy, and that's most of my career was uh, funding projects through the Navy, we funded more in environmental probably tenfold than what EPA does because we were a bigger program and the environment was extremely important to us. So don't say, wow, I've got environmental technology, so then I'm, I mean, need to go to EPA. Probably NSF, probably the Department of Defense and others would fund those kind of things. So it's not all about the money, it's where your technology has interest and that's what you're here to find out. Who are the agencies most likely to be of interest to me and that would want my technologies? So you'll hear talk about phase one, phase two, phase three. Basically, you submit a proposal in this early stage to develop the technology. Um, some can say prove it out, but basically you're taking the technology at the maturity level it is currently at. You were, you're, we're giving you anywhere from $100,000 to $225,000 to advance it to a more mature stage, and you're trying to convince the federal agency and the program managers that it's worth the larger $1 million, $1.5 million investment in the phase two, which we hope to get substantial prototypes and testing and things out of it. And then the goal is, is this goes into a commercialization. Now, there's never a direct line with technology. You'll fund things under one area. Um, some of the work may come from other places. You may think that this is my end goal and it goes in different directions, but our goal is that you'll get to a place where you'll get other investments either from the federal government or in many places from the private sector to either buy that technology or mature. So um, what's an SBIR firm look like? Under 500 people, U.S. owned and operated. There are some new rules that allow VC, uh, majority VC owned firms to participate in uh, DOE's ARPA program and HHS, but that is by far a very, very small percentage of it. And most of our companies are under uh, 10 people. Um, so the average, especially for certain agencies, is you know five people, uh, NSF, a lot of very new companies and things like that. So principal investigator, I mean, so we, we look for a couple things. You know, how strong is the technology, the approach? 
Um, how strong is the team? And what's the potential for that technology to commercialize or to address? So if I'm in the DOD, my commercialization is it's going to go on the Joint Strike Fighter and solve the problem I asked you to solve. So that's how you commercialize it. So we're looking at that. You have a path to get to that place. So make sure when you write these proposals, you're thinking about how awesome the science is, how awesome the team is, and how actually I will get and I can market this technology in a reasonable way. And typically, you should get help in that, and that's why we love to partner. Again, we're coming in here, we're gonna to go to the next state, but you have local resources here, and the goal is, is that we get you excited about this program, and then you take advantage of the local resources that can really help you write a proposal and address those kind of things that you need to address. Um, so there are some differences in SBIR and STTR, as we kind of walked through a little bit, you know, requires a PI, um, and requires a nonprofit research institution, a little bit less money, but, but now the other side of it is we're the federal government and we're really easy to work with. Uh, simple to write proposals to, very open. Um, all right, that was a little bit of a joke. Uh, so we are the federal government. Uh, we have certain rules that are required that you get registered on SAMS and you get registered on DUMS. Does anyone use SAMS? Great system. As, uh, Grants.gov, other big fans. Yep, there you go. Uh, very painful systems that the federal government uses, but they are required. So again, prepare early, go into these systems, and there are places to get help. PTACs are a great resource. Your SBDCs are great resources. Your district offices and things like that. Virtual Labs, I mean, those are all places that will help walk you through, but if you do these things at the last moment, uh, you'll have challenges. So this kind of just says, yes, we're the government, and here are the different things we require. But we've had big successes with SBIR. So, all these companies uh, had technologies that, in really the core of their technologies and their companies were based and developed under SBIR. And so we're proud of that, and we're proud that we make great companies, but we also have tons of companies that are 50 to 150 people that are providing great products and great services that stay at that level, that continue to win SBIR awards, but also um, have great technologists and, and advanced science. So what I want to kind of talk to, because I think, yes, how much time on? Huh? I have 15 more minutes? Oh my God, I'm going fast. That's so unusual for me to speak really fast. Um, so great. So some, some great sources of, uh, of technology and, and, and how to find out more. I always tell companies, go to SBR.gov, look at what we've funded in the past. So look at your technologies and see if we've made awards in those areas. Understand that and say, wow, um, I would have never thought of Army to fund the kind of you know, water purification technology I have. But you'll see they've made a bunch of awards in those areas. Learn a little bit more about that agency, what that agency does. And then you'll know that proposals will come out. Because the challenge is, is that an agency like the Army will come out with a solicitation just once a year. And it'll be open for, I think, three months. Maybe a little bit more, three and a half months. If you miss that window, and you really want to hit that window within the week of them opening the solicitation, you either have to wait nine months, or you only have three weeks of uh, development proposals. So really important to kind of figure out what are the agencies I'm looking for, what are the agencies that would be ideal for me. I need to understand those agencies, and especially if you have not submitted proposals, do not try to write you know, a bunch of proposals. People always ask, well, what's the percent of proposals that win? And I'm like, is it a good proposal or a bad proposal? Because the percentages change a lot. For decent proposals, the average is one in 10. Everyone wants to know. Different agencies, it is different. So um, about 15% of the proposals win, but again, you wanna make sure it's an agency that makes sense, so do not write 15 proposals and assume one's gonna make it. I guess you could write seven proposals and assume one's gonna make it. Uh, that's not a good technique. Target your agencies, target especially going out and get people to read your proposal beforehand. Really understand that agency, understand their, their lingo, but talk to the technical folks within that agency. So basically, the, the, the individuals that you'll see listed on the website, which isn't any of the individuals here, these are the program managers that oversee the entire program. They will know the types of science they work on. But as it gets down to the next level, at like uh, HHS, NIH, they have 27 different institutes that work in those different areas. And if you're doing cancer research, you would want to be talking to someone from the Cancer Institute that would be actually involved in evaluating that proposal. So take advantage of that, try to reach out to those individuals early and often. Uh, do not be obnoxious to them or realize that they're busy. But again, take advantage of it in the right way and they all have different ways that you can reach out. So real important, do your homework first. 
Uh, I love, you know, I think some of you, we pushed out quad chart development, write quad charts, and so your information is succinct and you know what we're looking for, um, and that's a great way to kind of get things moving. So then once you kind of figure those agencies, you can do a topic search, and I think that's important because you'll also see what was funded in the past. So you can do a topic search and look for closed topics, and again, you're looking for the field. Now the challenge you have here is, if you get too specific on your technology, granting agencies talk um, electronics, you know, advanced electronic manufacturers. So if you get too specific, it might have MEMS in there, but you might talk about MEMS and things like that that won't trigger a match to their topic. So you really understand, that's why I kind of tell you, look at awards, look at what we funded in awards, and then realize that, wow, they have an electronics topic that funds a lot of broad things. I work in that space, I do materials in the electronic fields, it can provide advanced, that's probably a good agency for me. And then find that individual that manages that topic, how you would actually in, uh, interview and or provide some information to them and start to work it that way and develop that expertise and knowledge. So that when you put a proposal in, you've, you've done your homework. Um, so then uh, award searches um, are also you know, available. So I think you know, looking at who you've won in past awards, looking at the proposals, and then digging into their website. So from our website, you can then dig into uh, USDA's website, DOE's website, and things like that, and understand their topics. Um, we also try to develop as much material online for folks to understand, and again, early on it's important to say, hey, you know, the, 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 the hill is steep in the beginning to figure out, is SBR right for me? How do I write a proposal? What do I need to do? How do I put all these pieces together? How do I do my cost? especially for a very new company. Try to get help there, but also understand you not, may not get it right the first time. A lot of the granting agencies, the beauty is, is you, know, you can reapply, you can learn from what you did wrong. Um, some of them will give you scores and say, hey, if you're in this range, you were very close, you need to work on these things, resubmit to us. So understand those things, understand that folks don't win the first time, please try again. We are looking uh, to help and, and do that um, and provide that assistance, but again, we also have online tutorials which help you figure out what are those right agencies, how do I put together some of these things, how do I do a cost uh, uh, proposal, and things like that. So those are available on sbir.gov. And then we also, as I said, really, really important to take advantage of local area networks. So we do a bit of that here. And our site is reasonable in this area. I mean, the problem we have is usually these are resources that we have at SBA a tie to. Um, so if we didn't have a fast word to that entity or some physical tie from SBA, we can't always post them, but they might be a good resource. So I think ask around. Um, I think also what's really good idea is to look at past awardees within the state and see if you know of any of those individuals. It's uh, most of the individuals that have won awards are very, very open to helping you walk through some of those things. And you're going to hear from some of them this afternoon. Uh, you know, it's great to hear. And what we try to do with some of this is really understand what, is an, uh, what are we looking for in proposals, but to hear from someone that's been through it and done it and the tricks of the trade are really, really important and continue to reach out to those individuals. So building that network up of who's won awards before, who do I talk to, and all those things is what we want you to do here. And this uh, one day event is to kind of help expose you to all those resources. Uh, so stay in touch. Um, I should have probably just had Brittany's email here because she's much better at responding to emails than I am. But John, uh, so I'm John L. Williams, one, and Brittany Sickler, uh, who works with me and, and uh, our resources to help. But again, great resources on our site. 